when your belief is 100%, that's when miracles flow. That's why those who don't believe in Christ, how are they going to call on his name to be saved when, you know, revelation starts to happen, which it already is, but God is so massive, him taking one step is a thousand years worth. No, him taking 5,000 steps or just like one day is as a thousand years to God as a, as a thousand years is as one day. Right? How are, how are people going to call upon Jesus and with their mouth confess that he is the Lord and Savior if they don't even believe in him? Right? How do you expect miracles to happen if you don't believe fully that it'll happen? And if you're lacking or wavering in your belief, God understands. He understands. Look at the place we live. Okay? It's not easy. All you have to do is ask with truth and yearning for belief and pray that you get more belief and ask him to please help your belief become filled to the tip top brim so miracles can flow that revival within your soul and spirit and those around you can happen your belief cannot be wavering you your belief has to be 100 percent in order for it to happen because just as the things you put into the universe will come back to you. The things you truly believe in will flow to you. And I understand how hard it can be with questioning man and the words in the Bible, given the fact that man's hands wrote it. But a narcissist is a mirror image of Satan himself. The spirit of narcissism is what Satan uses. If you research narcissism, very vividly, you will see it is a picture-perfect image of Satan himself in all of his personalities in all forms of narcissism. And doctors would love to say that everybody has narcissistic tendencies. But if that's true, you tell me how there's been saints and prophets. You can't have a prophet unless you have an individual who loves the truth so much they will ferociously look for it. What does a narcissist do to manipulate a person? They take a half, full 100% truth, half of it, and half a lie. And when they do that, it is like a concoction that brings such manipulation to the human brain. And unless you know how to deal with this and you know what to look for, you will be fooled. Okay? The Bible has so much truth in it. It is the Word of God. But Jesus is the manifest version of it without the manipulation, without the deceit without having to question anything. If you follow his words, because I promise you this, Jesus won't touch his words. Jesus won't dare touch his words because he is the manifested flesh word of God. It is finished, he said. Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. He's defeated death, which is the last enemy to be defeated. Christ has won us to victory. He didn't die for your sins. He died because of your sins and because he loves you so much. As long as you believe on him and you truly believe in the truth and follow the truth because he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you truly love Jesus, then you will not abandon the truth, even when it gets ugly. You don't abandon the truth. I don't care how scary it may be. Wouldn't you rather face it now and finally get used to it and let that scared feeling die off? You're not supposed to fear the truth. You're supposed to fear God. Now you may mix it up and think, well, if God is the truth and I'm fearing the truth, then I'm fearing God. You're fearing the truth in such a way you refuse to accept it. Fearing something so much you refuse to accept it within you, you're rejecting it. To fear God is a certain type of fear that is very intricate and intelligent and multidimensional within itself. This is serious. This is so serious.